we're talking about a book that is coming out soon by Dr. Rudy Webster, and we have him in studio with us this morning. Good morning, Dr. Webster. Welcome to Daybreak. Good morning. It's a bit early for me. <laughs> <laughs> you're up, you're up. I see you. you're having a little catch eye in the back there. Yes, while I was <laughs> having a snooze, yes. <laughs> It's a pleasure having you in, Dr. Webster. Thank you. Thank you. So I remember you from uh, from my school days, uh, coming in and, and having little talks with us uh, right before CXC and, mm. and that sort of thing. So that was a, a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was. Um, tell us a little bit about your your career. You've uh, achieved so many things so far. What, what have you? Uh, what have you well, done? Well, I'm from Barbados. Um, I went to school at a place called Harrison College. And um, I was a very poor student <laughs> in the early days. I was a very good athlete. And um, I got an athletic scholarship to go to the United States. In fact, my 220, 200 meter record as a teenager is still there 50 years after I left school. Wow. Beat that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I didn't take that scholarship. Instead, I won uh, a Barbados scholarship. I think you call it an island scholarship here. Mm -hmm. And I went to Edinburgh University to do medicine. And I was doing that and playing professional cricket at the same time, which was quite a thing. And then I was invited to New Zealand and I did my postgraduate medical studies in New Zealand and Australia. And um, then I, I taught medicine at uh, universities in Australia and Sweden and the United States and, and, thing, and then eventually went back to Australia. And uh, when I left Australia, Errol Barra, who was our prime minister, asked me to come to Barbados and to be one of his political advisors. And um, I went there and he died very soon after I got there. So I stayed on and Erskine Sandiford, who took over from him, asked me to stay on. And at the end of three or four years, I was going to go back to Australia because as far as I'm concerned, next to Grenada, that's the greatest place in the world. <laughs> <laughs> And um, Sandy Ford, the Prime Minister, said, no, you're, you're going to Washington to be Barbados' ambassador. And I said, well, look, I don't know anything about ambassador's work. And he said, don't worry, you didn't know anything about medicine at one time either. Mm -hmm. So I went, and that was it. And after that, I came more or less to Grenada. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and that what in is a it, nutshell. Yeah. Hmm? What is it that you're doing in Grenada now? Well, my wife is Grenadian, so mm -hmm. I have to stay here and <laughs> look after her. <laughs> but... Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm just cooling out now, okay. you know, and, and I'm doing a bit of writing. And I, as I said, I just finished a book mm -hmm. um, for, the in, for the Asian market. Some Indian people who um, read a book that I did years ago that was a bestseller in that part of the world, Australia, New Zealand, and Asia. After 25 years, uh, they asked me to do another book on performance. Um, performance in sport, but it applies to business and politics and stuff like that. And as you know, India is now, like China, one of the fastest developing countries in the world. So they're very, very interesting in, in, in performance. Um, th what they're doing is taking the principles from performance in sport, and they're using it in uh, performance in industry and commerce and politics and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So that is, that, is, that is what I've done. And, and uh, it's a very interesting book. Um, I've interviewed uh, three of Indians, India's best cricketers, Dhoni the captain, uh, Laxman and Dravid, and Tenduka has promised to do the forward to the book. Mm -hmm. But I've also interviewed Clive Lloyd, and I, for me that, has be, that is the centerpiece of the book, I think, for the West Indians anyway, because he tells why that West Indies team was the greatest team ever, how he did it, and, and, and um, why, as I said, it was the greatest. Now, Clive isn't known too well here in, in the Caribbean. Well, he's known, but he's not appreciated as much as, he, as he's appreciated abroad. And you know, if I may, I'll tell you just a quick story. Um, when Nelson Mandela was in prison, his favorite team was West Indies cricket team. And his favorite, his hero was Clive Lloyd. Yeah. And when he went to, when Clive Lloyd went to South Africa, Mandela insisted on meeting him and told him, you know, you're my hero and you inspired me and stuff like that. Um, and then um, I was in South Africa during the transition period between, and President de Klerk, who was the president at the time, asked me to come and see him. He was crazy about golf, right? And he knew I was working with Greg Norman, who was the number one golfer in the world at the time. So I went to see him. 
And then he took me into the cabinet room and he said, Rudy, this is where apartheid was legally born mm. and this is where it will legally die. And I said to him, you know, what you are doing is a great thing. It takes great leadership to do this. And he said, talking about great leadership, um, I've always admired Clive Lloyd. He is a, he's a great leader. So here we have two people from a very big racial divide singing the praises of one of our own people and saying what a great leader he is. But here in the Caribbean, he's not being appreciated for what he has done, mm. which is mm. sad. So um, I've got a fantastic interview with him. And that is something my wife tells me I should take that out of the book, just that in interview and print it and just use it here in the Caribbean. I might do that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm. But hopefully what you've put in the book, uh, at least for now, um, should highlight uh, some of what he's done. And, and oh yes, it, it gives, I don't know if any of you saw the film uh, Fire in Babylon. That is a film about West Indies success and there's a whole heap of nonsense um, about why we were the great team. And um, th their main theme was that we were great because we were motivated to triumph over our colonial masters. And that is total mm -hmm. nonsense. So I think Clive Lloyd has set that straight. And it is the things that, that are um, important in all sorts of performance, doing the basics well, you know, discipline, teamwork, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that sports performance, you related in the book that sports performance can be related to other types of performance. So can you give us a little, you know, maybe a little, a little one or two hints as to how they relate? Well, you know, um, people in politics, people in medicine, people in law, people in business, they are playing different games. But the human things are all the same. You know, concentration, vision, motivation, confidence teamwork, leadership, um, stuff. I've written quite a bit about leadership and teamwork, and I think that that is probably what will appeal to the people here in the Caribbean. And, and um, I've used a lot of examples from people other than sports people. Uh, for example, um, politicians, people like Errol Barrow, who's the Prime Minister of Barbados, and a good friend of mine from Sri, La Sri Lanka, um, and, and, and business people and stuff like that. Uh, we're just playing different games in our professions, but the basic human things are the same. Mm. We, f we have the same problems, the same needs, the same challenges. And it's how we deal with these things that determine how well you do in your other areas. Nice. So how soon are we looking to see this book? Well, um, uh, the, the publishers are HarperCollins, right, which is a huge uh, publishing company. And they say that it probably be out in about two or three months. Okay. So um, uh, the manuscript has gone off and we're looking forward to it. Right. Mm. And where would it be distributed? Well, it will be, as I said, for the Asian market, mm -hmm. India, Pakistan, Australia, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And um, it will be on Amazon. I will try and persuade them. They've got the worldwide rights to the book. So I will try and persuade them to get some of them down here to the Caribbean. Include, yes, of yeah. course. Because it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for the young people to read these things. Because, you know, if I, if I may make one point, here in the Caribbean, we make a big deal about our education system. And it is very, very good. But we think that if you have, um, uh, if you've been to a good school, and you've got a lot of certificates, or you've been to university and you've done well, that you're bright, you know? The skills that are needed to pass exams are totally different from the skills that you need to play a sport or to run a business, right? Um, here, we focus more on getting information, and education really is about the past. It is about information and knowledge that is already in existence. And what we do, we take it and put it together in different forms. We regurgitate it during the exams, and if we do well, we say, you're bright. In business is different. It's about goal setting, picking a team, setting a strategy, looking at consequences. It is about doing your competitors. So the things are totally different. So the skills of literacy and numeracy, although they are very important, the skills of operacy, the skills of doing a more. This is a weakness in the, the Caribbean people. We are very bright in, at analyzing and planning, but executing and following through they're extremely poor. And what I would like to see 
in our schools and our education system that we put as much emphasis on the doing, the skills of doing, as we do on acquiring knowledge. Because you look at the people who make a difference in the world. Bill Gates dropped out of university. Jobs dropped out of university. And you will see a lot of the people who have done extremely well in the world and have made a difference. Some of them never been to university or dropped out of university. So I think that we must um, get rid of this idea that once you have knowledge and information, that doing your job will be automatic and easy. Nothing is further from the truth. Mm -hmm. well, of course, you're not uh, encouraging people to drop out of school, though. No, <laughs> no, no, I think it is very, very, I think the two things are complementary. And mm -hmm. this is what Singapore did many years ago. They, they put just as much um, importance to the technical sides of the jobs, the technology colleges, as they did to the academic. And you have to do that. But you know when you come out of university, you don't know anything, really. Then you have to go on the job and learn what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that if we could just change the emphasis a bit and balance it a bit more, and get this crazy idea out of our heads that once you have a degree, that you're qualified to do anything. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just not true. So is that really what the book is about? Um, yes. As you say, uh, coming up with a plan, picking a team, forming a strategy, uh, working on outdoing your competitors, setting goals, yes. um, and then actually going forward and yes. achieving them. It's, it's about all those things uh, because you know it, it, those are the you know you got a jigsaw puzzle. If you don't have a picture on the box, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for you to put the pieces together. Right. So this is what we're doing. We're having a, putting a picture on the box, putting all the pieces there and helping you to put them together. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that the, the, the bit that would be most instructive here in the Caribbean is a section on leadership and teamwork. Because this is the area, I think, where we are way behind um, the rest of the world. You know, I had a visitor from Sri Lanka who came to Barbados many years ago. And he said, you know, Rudy Barbados is a wonderful place. You have everything here. But why are you not developed like Singapore? And I couldn't, couldn't find an answer. You know, academically, we're very, very bright and stuff like that. But we didn't seem to have the type of education or the motivation to take us from that base to the, to the next level. And that is what the book is about too. How do you motivate people to go to the next level? Mm. It, is, it is very, very important. And ability only tells you what you're capable of doing. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to do it, right? Motivation, on the other hand, tells you why you're going to do something and how likely you are to do it. And we spend a lot more time looking for ability instead of focusing on motivational profiles. In fact, the experts now say that if you know a person's motivational profile, why he would do things, you will have a much better idea about how he's likely to perform on the job. Okay? Because a lot of ability, and a friend of mine in Australia used to say, coach, nobody has got a right to be proud of natural ability. You did nothing to earn it. It came from your father and mother. <laughs> and it's only what you do with work and discipline that is a legitimate cause for pride. And this is one of the things that has disappointed me about the Caribbean, our work ethic and our discipline. And, and I think that if we could get those two things right, we'd be able to compete on the world scene. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that we've done it in cricket, we were the best in the world for 15 years and the best of all time. And, and what we've done in the book, what Clive Lloyd has done, and, and what I've written about is to tell you how to do it. And I think that this can act as a model for the politicians and the business people, right? If you want to be the best in the world, you have to be better than everybody else at everything. So that, that, is, that is what it is mainly about. But it's interesting that the Indians have asked me to do this. And I think I'm better known in that part of the world than I am here. Yeah. And, and I think the fact that they are now taking off uh, and, and becoming like China. I mean, they are going to be the two um, rivals in the future. Um, the fact that they want to have information like this, not just for their sportsmen, but for their business people and academics, tells you where they want to go and how motivated they are to take their country to the next level. Mm -hmm.
yeah. and not just their business people and academics I'm assuming just for the general population as well that they hope hoping will read the book of or, course yeah. of course because you know um, we talk about leadership and we talk about the leaders the people at the top the leader is only as good as the people who, f who are following him you know and if you if you educate them you get them with the right mindset they will make your job easier and there was a general who said the greatest leader in the world will be nothing if he doesn't understand and motivate his people. Mm -hmm. So you're quite right. That is where it's going to have to start. Okay. Um, I'm a, I'm a, so as a final question, uh, with the book, you know, you talk about you know teaching people to put the puzzle together and, mm -hmm. and you know learning to be motivated and, and setting goals and so on. Do you think that's something that can be learned, or do you think that there are some people that are achievers and when they and they read your book, it's things that maybe they hadn't really thought that they do, but they do automatically, and the people that, that don't do it just never will, even though they may read it and comprehend, yeah. uh, have trouble putting it yeah. in place. Well, I so think or but different readers will get different things from the book. But going back to what you were saying, look, your performance revolves around your self-image, right? And if you see yourself in a particular way, that is exactly how, how you will behave. Um, f for example, Students who do poorly in school, with the exams, they say they're told that they're not bright. The ones who get good marks, they're told you're very, very bright. Now, if the poor students use the, the results of their examination to judge their worth, right? If they take the examination results as the truth about themselves, they will continue to be poor students, okay? They will continue, and the bright students will, because that is their self-image. And to change their behavior, you have got to stop, uh, get them to think not about what they have been, because exams only tell you what you have done and what you've learned, not what you can do and what you can become. So the key is to get them to change their self-beliefs and their self-image, and thinking about where you are now, what you can become. I think that is the key to performance, and I think that that is going to be the key the development of our islands. Unless we change our self-beliefs and our self-image, get rid of the insularities that are holding us back, and, and uh, get rid of the excuses, and get strong self-discipline and self-motivation. If we do that, we'll be able to compete with anybody in the world. We've done it in cricket, and we can do it in other things. Excellent. So that is it. Excellent. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel inspired and motivated already just I'm, I'm anticipating <laughs> the, the release of this book. So uh, congratulations on, on the publishing of the book. And uh, we're you. definitely looking forward to seeing it okay. and reading it. <laughs> There's some stories in the book that you can't read, though. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay wonderful. All right, thank you thank so you much, Dr. Much. Webster, thank for you. joining us thank this you. morning.